Thousands of men made the ultimate sacrifice 70 years ago on D-Day, all to help put the Allies on a path to victory. But one small town in Virginia was especially hard hit, losing 19 boys by that day's mm -hmm. end. Mike Barnacle has the story of the group that will forever be known as the Bedford Boys. All facing west, toward the beach where they landed, the channel they crossed, and the land that they left to come and help rid the world of the terror that was Hitler's Third Reich. Omaha Beach, the American Cemetery, Colville sur Mer, Normandy, 172 acres, 9,386 headstones, bleached white by sun, wind, and time. Normandy from the Cherbourg Peninsula, eastward to the mouth of the Seine, shook with a tremendous roar of battle. 150,000 Allied soldiers. They came ashore at 6.30 in the morning of 6 June, 1944. The noise, stunning. The carnage, horrific. The bravery, constant. Omaha Beach was a fortress. Machine guns had clear and interlocking fields of fire from cement pillboxes. Men dropped in the water, caught in a buzzsaw of bullets as soon as the gates opened. Some drowned. Others barely made it ashore. Men like Lawrence Brannon never forget. I got this about noon or a little later. I laid on that shelf right down there until 8 o'clock that night and watched it. I saw it. Saw it all. I saw a boat with 300 guys in it blown up. They couldn't get out. Brannon, 94 now, is from Morristown, Tennessee. His days forever shaped by what happened here 70 years ago. The first battalion hit right down there. Germans had bradished it up and they couldn't go. They killed 800 of them right against that bradish. They, there were bodies floating out three, 200 yards out in the water. When I went out that night, they had, they moved them out of the way for us to go back out. Man, it was just, uh, it was just hell, really, you know. I saw, I actually saw over, I'd say over 2,000 people killed that I could see them. I, I lived a thousand years that day. At day's end, more than 1,500 American soldiers had been killed. One of them was Private Ray Stevens of Bedford, Virginia, a town of 3,200 folks. Private Stevens and his twin brother Roy belonged to Company A, 29th Infantry. They were only two of 30 young men from Bedford who hit the beach 70 years ago with the 29th. By dusk, 19 would be dead. Two sets of brothers would perish in the campaign. One small town still carrying history's heartache. The monuments of history are all still here. Punt du Hoc, where American rangers scaled a 100-foot-high sheer cliff to capture a German gun emplacement. The hedgerows, thick, dangerous, and ever-present. The villages, still looking much the same as they did when the Allies came calling. And the largest of the cemeteries. The one that sits on a bluff above the beach where World War II in Europe began to end. Omaha Beach. Where those who died in Europe serve as a daily reminder of the horror of war and the price of freedom and democracy. And it is here, no matter the season, no matter how many years pass, the sun still sets on sacred ground where heroes look west, toward home, toward America. And Mike Barnacle uh, standing by, it's hard to imagine that town on that day and the days after that to lose so many of their own. Oh, Mika, it's, uh, it's, you know, 70 years later, it's incomprehensible to think how, you know, parents could deal with such grief and in a, such a small environment, 32, 3,400 people in 1944 in that town. Uh, so many served and so many died. Uh, but again, as we said earlier, this is who we are as a country. It certainly is who we were. And the entire country went to World War II. Whether you went overseas or whether you stayed in the United States working in a, 
industry related to the war and nearly every industry was related to the war effort we all serve and it's very very different today Mike the enormity of that loss how did the word get back to Bedford how long did it take uh, the only thing President Roosevelt said in public that day was to pray that prayer we, we heard a moment ago but as the as June unfolded as the summer unfolded how did the, the enormity of that loss sink in at home well, I, I think the, the the scene in Saving Private Ryan, oddly enough, the telegrams that went back to the, being sent out from the War Department, it would be at least 10 days to two weeks mm. wow. before the word got back to that small town about the casualties. Uh, in my own family, uh, oddly enough, my uncle Gerald, who was killed at Midway, the Battle of Midway in June 6, 1942, uh, his mother, my grandmother, they did not find out about his death until early in July, right before the 4th of July, and then it was only a telegram insisting or listing the fact that he was missing in action. And it was another couple of weeks, well into July, before he was clearly declared dead by the 